My name is Michael, and I like a Roshi pens. So it was like almost two years ago when I bought my first Roshi pen. It was a Nakaya Tekapot, this one here, with medium soft nib. And I got completely hooked. Uh, I love the Roshi. It's Kurotome Nuri finish, so it's black over red. And since then, I started researching Urushi. I started learning and gathering information on this art or craft, uh, whatever you want to call it. And several months ago, it's like five months ago, I started my own experiments. And uh, now I'm painting uh, Urushi pens. So this one is one of my creations. This one in Nishima also. And here is Namisu, uh, also painted in Akatame Nuri with gold leaf. And recently I acquired another Nakaya. It's Hekitame Nuri. So it's transparent, golden, like amber brown lacquer over pale uh, green. And uh, that's it. So. Uh, I wanted to show you some basic tools and materials you need to start doing anything with Urushi. You will probably much easier find information about Kintsugi, so Japanese art of mending, of gluing and um, decorating broken porcelain and broken homer pieces. Uh, and some of the tools and some of the materials used there are quite similar. Uh, this part uh, of the video will be for people who want to just start with as little uh, spending and as little tools and materials as possible. So let's start with the lacquer. So you will probably need at least three basic uh, lacquers. So this is Kiyomi, uh, Ki uh, Urushi. So basic raw Urushi, and actually for pens, especially made of ebonite, you can skip this lacquer. But it's very useful for many other things, like for kintsugi or for uh, wood or for uneven rough surfaces. But it's not completely necessary to do an ebonite pen. Uh, the one which you will find absolutely necessary is uh, Nakanuri or any other kind of uh, medium, uh, medium uh, layer lacquer. So I have several different kinds of Nakanuri, uh, but usually a 50 gram tube uh, for start will be absolutely enough of any Nakanuri. Nakanuri is a slightly higher quality lacquer and uh, then ki urushi and it's it's not very transparent but like transparentish especially some better quality uh, lacquers so we have lacquer then we need to prepare the surface so usually most pans most ebonite pans are uh, polished so you will need to roughen the surface of uh, the pen slightly with like four or six hundred grit uh, sandpaper or 1050 grit uh, micro mesh. And there is a much more of different micro meshes here from 1050 to 12,000, including files. And actually, I would uh, suggest to have all the grids possible in this form or in the form of pads. Uh, but just simple cloth is much more convenient and much more flexible than pads, but pads are useful for, useful for some other things. Uh, good things to have is say for polishing and for flattening the surface is different types of whetstones, artificial whetstones, artificial charcoal. So it's a natural charcoal, this one and this one here and this one here. Uh, it must be natural char charcoal and uh, preferably from Japan, made especially for Urushi. 
but if not, it's okay to try and experiment with artist charcoal uh, available at artist stores, but not processed one. Only full pieces, full branches of charcoal can be used. And you have to experiment with them and check if it's possible to use them. But also you can buy quite cheaply pieces of uh, whetstone or artificial charcoal. It's crystal whetstone. Grids from 300 up to uh, 3000 and it will set you back like 20 bucks or something like that altogether. Uh, in area of polishing, having a good polishing paste would be very useful too. And for the last step, I'm jumping in the, in the process, uh, best thing you can have is Mika Kiko powder. Uh, for polishing mixed with oil or just on its own, just with bare hand. Uh, Migakiko tends to be quite expensive, but it comes in a packet which will last, last you a, several years probably, so it could be a good idea to share the, share the cost of it with uh, some other people and split it. Other necessary tools, which I use mostly, are of course spatulas or maybe a place to work with Furushi. After several different experiments I found glass to be best. So it's easiest to clean, it's absolutely flat and, and it's, it's, it's uh, glossy and you, you easy, can easily see everything. I would prefer it to be single color and I will probably find something like that but I just found it in the kitchen. I use two of those plates, it's glass and it has rubber feet so it does not move on the table because the moving part is quite important because you sometimes have to mix urushi and uh, you use spatulas for that. You will need at least two spatulas and or three even for mixing urushi and for filtering urushi and for putting it back from one container to another or taking it from the working surface back to a container of some kind. So it's quite cheap. You can easily use the plastic ones, plastic ones are okay, this size or bigger size. Um, I use uh, Hiroki, it's made of uh, uh, Japanese cypress and it's very, uh, it's, it's quite easy to, to, to mend it, to, to, to modify it and to adjust it to your specific needs. Uh, usually, usually with such a knife, um, Kiradashi. Uh, just a basic uh, workshop Japanese knife, high grade steel, very sharp, very easy to sharpen because it has just one bevel. So good to have something like that and a scalpel. You will find it extremely useful if in many different cases, for example for cutting the masking tape, which is uh, also necessary, especially with pens. Uh, to cover the threads or to cover some trim or just to glue some pieces together just to see how it works uh, or to mend things temporarily or to prepare stands for your pens because the pens have to be uh, safely positioned for curing so I use wooden sticks and I sometimes use pieces of tape to make them adjust to the diameter of my uh, specific body better. So masking tape, a lot of masking tape, high quality preferably. Uh, this one is scotch blue but I also have uh, washi Japanese tape and I use it a lot. It's much thinner and much it glues much better. Several different containers with different fluids. So it's water, uh, it's uh, isopropyl alcohol, it's olive oil for cleaning, it's perilla oil, but also linseed oil can be used for mixing with uh, Rushi lacquer. Uh, you will also need, uh, ah, in case of spatulas, I forgot, you can use just a metal one. Uh, Rushi is set to react with metal, but I did not notice anything like that, and I didn't notice that using a metal spatula does anything bad to Rushi of any kind, even the best quality ones. So it's much cheaper than those uh, wooden ones and slightly more expensive than the plastic ones. And uh, 
absolutely useful you will find uh, lint-free cloth this size and this size for cleaning, for dusting, for wiping of urushi uh, Kimtech wipes used by uh, optic fiber technicians uh, is also lint-free and uh, very useful in urushi workshop and last but not least uh, I forgot containers you can use plastic you can use glass you can use ceramic you can use laboratory containers of different size and different kinds so it's absolutely up to you but the most interesting and usually the most expensive and the most exciting one is brushes I have a lot of brushes from, from simple maybe not so simple but typical European uh, Western artist brushes to hake, so Japanese wooden brushes made with human hair of different width and different kind. But for a beginner, I would absolutely advise to stick with European flat brushes, not those ones. Those are extremely difficult to use, extremely difficult to learn how to use them and how to mend them and clean them. And I'm still learning that. I'm not very happy with the results yet. I will be training, but I would definitely suggest you go with uh, just simple European artist brushes. And you have to experiment because, for example, here there are some brushes made by Citadel for Warhammer figures. And I found them quite useful for some things. But I also use synthetic brushes uh, of different kind and also use uh, higher quality brushes made of uh, different animal furs and the most important thing is that it's not like that the more expensive the brush is the better it usually it's suited better for different jobs so you have to experiment you have to check how this specific brush works with this kind of urushi and this kind of surface and this kind kind of technique you want to use so just buy several different brushes, sizes from like 5, 6 to 15 for, to 14, for example, or 12. It's, those sizes are best suited for fountain pens and experiment, just check it. How it works, how thin layer you're able to make with these pens, how even, how uh, easy the brush is to clean. Uh, I keep brushes uh, cleaned and with some olive oil on the bristles just to make sure that they will not stick with urushi and uh, it's much easier to prepare them for uh, another session of painting just you have to remember to remove all the oil so as for basics that would be it it uh, having like three types of lacquer so nakanuri oh i forgot to show you other lacquers so it i showed you nakanuri and the other one which will be uh, necessary for like basic uh, basic uh, design like for example uh, any of those tamenuri I showed you before uh, so you will need uh, nakanuri for a base then you will need kijiro uh, uh, which is a clear lacquer and then for a finishing sequence you will need uh, some kind of a roll lacquer of high quality for example Kiyomi or uh, Isehaya or some other kind of uh, high quality roll very clean lacquer and of course some pigment you can buy pigments already mixed with the lacquer much easier to use or use pigments natural pigments with no additives like pure uh, pigments based on iron oxide uh, for reds uh, at artist shop and uh, mix them yourself and I will try to, th to show how to mix pigments in one of the future videos so that's it uh, I think that buying basic toolkit for a Rushi uh, if you look around and try different shops like Watanabe Schotten and Tiktum in Germany and uh, Korest in Germany also uh, will set you back anything from 
150 to 500 euro depending on the type of tools and type of lacquer you decide to use. I hope you will find it useful and please subscribe if you did and we'll see in one of the future of my videos. Bye!